You're listening to the Sports Fix. Portions of the Sports Fix brought to you by Quick Lane at Valley Ford Truck, home of the low price tire guarantee. Quicklane.com slash Valley Ford Truck. Sports Fix listeners don't wait all day or all week to get in on the fun. The party doesn't stop when we go off the air all week long. The Sports Fix social media sites are your one-stop shop for all things Cleveland sports. Jump over to Facebook.com slash The Sports Fix. Facebook.com slash The Sports Fix and become a fan today because we love fans and they create some of the best sports talk in town, Daddy. You'll enjoy talking to your fellow Cleveland sports fans on the Sports Fix fan page. And if Twitter's your thing, well, you know how we do it. Tweet with us at the Sports Fix CLE. It's that simple. Twitter.com slash the Sports Fix CLE, baby. Chat live with the crew during all your favorite Cleveland sports events, tickets and contests and trivia and so much more. Get with us today, the Sports Fix on social media. Facebook.com slash the Sports Fix. Tweet with us at the Sports Fix CLE. Join, Join the, the Sports Fix. Fix. Oh, it's fun to the Sports Fix live. Yeah, we do it game man style. We do it all kinds of style, baby. The line. Live in the and our special it's guest, Brown's great. Without fix. this man, there is no dog pound. The Sports Fix. Ah, oh, you gotta love it. When the technical gremlins hit you right as you're going on the air, it does not matter. Have no fear. The sports fix is here. We are live. That's all that matters is that the music is playing, that the man is talking, and that, baby, you are here listening. Welcome in, each and every one of you, to the sports fix. J-Rock, Jerry Myers with you guys here as we are each and every weekday Live at noon, right here on the thesportsfix.net. All the other platforms, we'll get into the formal introductions there here in a second. But you guys, a lot going on. A lot to get into today, here on a Tuesday. <laughs> My man Charles in the chat room. Yes, the technical gremlins. They always love to uh, show their face when you least expect it. But hey, man, it, what do we say all the time? It's live radio, baby. Let's keep this thing moving. And like I said, a lot going on, of course. LeBron Watch 2014 continues. And uh, you know what? Seriously, I feel better. We talked about this yesterday, and, and I'm already feeling better. I mean, listen, I I will continue to be dragged, kicking and screaming back into this thing. I'm going to be curmudgeonly as possible. I love that word. When it comes to the whole you-know-who coming back, you-know-where thing. But the part about Cleveland winning and other cities losing the part about Cleveland outsmarting Pat Riley things like that I can't lie the civic pride that aspect of me man I told you guys yesterday that that part of it it's like it's a weird polarizing cosmic pull as as the whole you know who is pushing me away while the the Cleveland pride aspect of it is sucking me in I'm just like each and every one of you guys sitting here just watching amazed at some of the things and some of the bad parts that we talk about all the time about Twitter and the media during times like this rearing their ugly heads I'll tell you I mean even the plain thing I'm not going to dive too much into the content just yet. We'll get into the introductions in the show, but Jason Lloyd from the Akron Beacon Journal spelled it out. We talked yesterday about how many people were dead wrong about the whole thing over the weekend, and every every station in town was tripping over themselves to make up the next phony details, and I don't understand that. I've never understood that. I would rather tell somebody that I don't know anything more than this and have them go find it elsewhere. I mean, that's being honest. Rather than make something up to keep them listening to the sports fix, that doesn't make any sense because at the end of the day, it just blows up in your face. But we saw a ton of it. Turned out, LeBron, the whole plane thing, Dan Gilbert wasn't on it. Zadrunas wasn't on it. David Griffin wasn't on it. Oh, what do you know? It didn't have anything to do with the Cavaliers at all. It was down there for a mall project that Dan Gilbert's working on in Fort Lauderdale. But never let the facts get in the way of a good news story, as, as I've seen here, especially with the Twitterazzi out there. And I tell you guys... Twitter's great for some things, but you see the bad, bad sides of it too here. And this whole LeBron Watch 
2014 is bringing that out. We're going to talk about all of that here. We're talking Indians. The Yankee series kicked off. I'm going to do that first things first. I told you we try to be different. Today we're going to kick off talking tribe. Well, instead of the whole LeBron watch, although we're into it, LG is going to join us from Cleveland Sports 360 in a little bit. Johnny Manziel being drug tested by the Cleveland Browns. We've got the latest on that as you know what? <laughs> Luckily, it's Tuesday. We've got at least three more days before the next Johnny football drama unfolds. But we can talk about the latest here with LG, Dr. Football. Every Tuesday, he's with us. Bill Checkis will be with us again here today as we talk with the doctor about Johnny Manziel, about the resettled concussion settlement as they've once again made some tweaks on that thing. And we've got preliminary approval on that. Jim Brown. He loses his ring. He says it's good. He says it was stolen. Now it's up for auction. His Browns championship ring, the 64 ring. We're talking about all of that with Dr. Football. We're opening up the phone lines and so much more because, baby, I say it every day. They give me the microphone. We give you the voice here on the Sports Fix. So pick up your phone and give us a call. Welcome in, by the way, whether you're listening on the sportsfix.net, on TuneIn, and the TuneIn radio app worldwide, on Spreaker and Mixler, all live platforms. And welcome in each and every one of you also listening 24-7 on Digital Delay, on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, CarPlay, all of the podcast platforms and all the different places that you enjoy the show thank you guys so much for being with us as i said at the beginning i'm your host the big daddy on the microphone j-rock jerry myers with you for the duration doing what we do and doing it with you so pick up the phone and give me a call 216-539-7535 i see the phone lines already lighting up 216-539-7535 phone lines are open for the next oh 10 minutes or so here in this segment. Then we've got a couple of people coming on. Of course, LG. We've got Dr. Football. I'll reopen the phone lines later on in the show as well. So don't worry. If you don't get in early, we'll get you in later. 216-539-7535. If you're impatient, if you've got ADD, if you need it now... Like J.G. Wentworth, I've got a take and I want it now. Then hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. Social media, daddy. Facebook.com slash The Sports Fix. Tweet with us at The Sports Fix, C-L-E, all one word. Facebook.com slash The Sports Fix. Tweet with us at The Sports Fix, C-L-E. Perfect ways to stay in touch 24-7 in real time during the show, after the show, whenever you like. Stay in touch with us. And don't forget, if you haven't already, like and follow the pages. Join the 21,000-plus social media followers of the Sports Fix. Hey, remember, if 140 characters is not your thing, if you need to talk, you can always email us, thesportsfix at AOL.com. And the one-stop shop, we say it every day. If you need anything and you can't remember it about the Sports Fix, just go to the mothership, the home base, if you will, thesportsfix.net. It's got your live broadcast streaming as you're listening to it right now, replays of every show. It's got all the links to all of our social media widgets. Actually, our social medias are right there on the page in their own boxes. It's really a one-stop shop for all things Cleveland sports. Our sponsor banners are there. Check them out today. Check everything out for us, thesportsfix.net. Before I go to the phone lines, I'm going to just dive in a little bit here. 216-539-7535. I've got the first caller on tap, but I kind of want to set the stage. Before we get into any... And by the way, guys, (laughs) before we even get into the Indians, before we go into anything else, of course, today is the exact anniversary day, if you will, of the decision, as we know. And I've got to say this, and I'm going to take somebody to task. And you guys know, uh, with the media in town, I'm I'm not ashamed and I'm not afraid to throw my opinion out when I think some people are doing things that aren't aren't copacetic, that are not correct. And I've got to call out News Channel 5 right now, Andy Baskin, I've always thought Andy is a nice guy. He, of course, he's on a another radio station here in town. He's the news director at News Channel 5. I was shocked. I really was because this makes no programming sense to me whatsoever. But with today being the anniversary of the decision, and especially with Cleveland apparently willing to kiss and make up with LeBron James, wanting to to put the team back together, put the band back together. I'm coming home, all of that stuff, right? 
Channel 5 and Andy Baskin in their infinite loyalty to the city of Cleveland, what they're doing is trolling the city of Cleveland on the air. They're going to rebroadcast the decision here tonight on the anniversary of what went down. They're going, yes, I'll say it again. They're going to re-air the decision special in its entirety tonight on the anniversary of the decision four years ago. Tell me, in any universe, what sense that makes. Tell me not only what sense that makes, tell me what reason you would have for doing it with the exception of blatantly trolling the fans of Cleveland, wanting to elicit, you know what you're going for here. And what I find even funnier is that it's happening in the midst of the whole kiss and make up, everybody trying to pet. Why would you rip? I saw, why would you rip it open? I saw a great example on social media today. Somebody tweeted out and said, it's the equivalent of looking at the Dear John letter that you wrote or that your spouse wrote to you before you split up right before you go on your reconciliation date. I mean, there nothing good can come of that. All you're going to do is rip it open and stir up even more, which I'm fine because, as you know, I'm driving the whole anywhere but Cleveland campaign with LeBron James anyway. But... If he's coming here, if he's thinking about it, if you want him to come here, that's not a smart thing to do in general. And even if he wasn't coming here, it is not a nice thing to do to the people of Cleveland. And I don't mean that in the, in the fuddy-duddy way, like, ooh, that's not a nice thing to do. That really does not seem like smart programming for a Cleveland television station. This is not sports talk radio. This isn't even somebody meant to elicit a response because you guys know sometimes what we do is sports talk is about passionate eliciting those responses the fans that's what sports and all of that is what we do but you're the news station and you are a supposed to be an unbiased filter for the people there and you're gonna just to me it's bush league and it's something that is above news channel five and i'm very disappointed and and really just upset that I heard that they would even, I mean, just what made that a good idea with the exception of the fact that you're going to rile up a bunch of people on Twitter and stir up some emotions. Now I'm sure that's part of the goal. I'm sure they'll say, Hey, that's part of the goal. And maybe I'm not looking at the part of today's society where news has become entertainment because it has, it truly has, but it's not supposed to be that way. And I just, I'm the word I go back to is trolling the fans of Cleveland. Cause that's honestly what it feels like to me, what you're doing. And that, that's something that, that some other town does. That's something that somebody does to Cleveland. That's not something that somebody that is supposed to be part of Cleveland, a, a entity, an institution, and, and a person who claims point blank, Andy Baskin makes that call. Sorry to call you out, Andy, but you make that call. You are the sports director. You claim to love this city of Cleveland. But when I listen to your broadcast, it fits right into this because I think you love talking about what's wrong with this city much more than you actually love this city. And just decisions like that bear out what I'm saying. Am I wrong? Talk to me about it. I'm going to go to the phone lines here momentarily because I see them lighting up. Matter of fact, before I go on anymore, we've got a lot to get into. Indians, LeBron, Johnny Football, the Browns, so much more. But I am going to let you guys kind of take the reins here. Caller, you are first up on the Sports Fix. Good morning, J-Rock. Hey, good morning. Who's this? Bruce. Bruce, what's going on, my man? Hey, I got a couple of things that uh, kind of irritate me. Don't make them difficult. <laughs> Don't make That's an everyday hard. thing, though. <laughs> What's happening, man? Bruce, you're hey, irritated. Uh, Wait yeah. a minute. I've never heard of that before. Bruce is irritated about something. All right, go for it. Oh, uh, there you go. It's a new one. Hey, uh, first off, let's start with Masterson. Um, oh, right. LG then, put out on. a pretty good uh, article this morning about, uh, you know, does he really want to be in Cleveland or can we trade him or, you know, different, a different kind of outlook on – you know, like, I don't know, does he really want to be here is the and, and part that got me. We're discussing um, whether Masterson wants to be here. See, I think that that has nothing to do with this. And I've I've got to be honest. I'm going to stop you there before we get into the next part of your thing, is that whatever's wrong with Justin Masterson, it, it, I don't think that is it. There's a lot of things that I do believe are wrong with Justin Masterson right now. I think there's some – I do believe that the leg is bothering him. I think that he's also just – 
lost his, I don't want to say focus in the bad way, he's lost it for whatever reason, and he's digging himself into that hole trying to find it. I don't think it's a case of a guy who's packed in. I don't think he's in any... It's not like the Indians insulted Justin Masterson. They offered him a very... No, we offered him $15 good, million. I mean... Right, so what I'm saying is if you had offered him a, a pittance of a contract, if you had offered him a small... You know, something insulting, I could see that. But there's no way you're insulted being dropped $15 million in your lap and it's just not enough. But you're right. Of course he was. I see LG in the chat room talking about his reaction after he came out last night. I, I mean, I would hope that a guy is frustrated when he can't get through three innings. But he so, talked in the locker room like he was the happiest guy in the world, you know? And I mean, that's confusing to me because he hasn't been doing that. And for a while, I thought it was a defense mechanism. Honestly, I thought, okay, Masterson, he'll crack a joke after a bad outing. And there's right. sometimes that that's okay. Sometimes you want that because you don't want a guy to beat his head up against the locker and then you don't you get negative results. But... Yeah, a lot of people are wondering, hey, is he not taking it seriously enough? Now, I do got to be honest, and I, I'm sure that if we were talking about LeBron, I might not give him the benefit of the doubt, because I'll be honest well, about we'll it. Well, we'll get I'm, to that in a minute. But, but. but talking about Masterson, I just give him the benefit of the doubt that some of that is a defense mechanism, that sometimes when you're uncomfortable, when I'm uncomfortable, when you're in... I mean, how many times do you laugh, not because something's funny, when you're in a very in, uncomfortable situation? So... Part of me feels that that's a defense mechanism, but you're right. When you're laying an egg, when you're when you're going two innings and giving up five runs, and I will point blank say Justin Masterson is why, in my opinion, the Indians lost that game last night. Bullpen, oh yeah, no doubt about seven it. Seven innings. I mean, the bullpen gave you a chance to come back. You did almost come back. If you don't give up, I mean, it was pitiful. And and if Tito didn't hook him when he did, it would have been even worse because he was on the path to giving up another two or three runs in the third inning. So. I don't know. I, I do give him the benefit of that being a defense mechanism, but clearly, and you, this was where I was going to go, Justin Masterson, where does he go? He has got to go to the, and, and I don't even know if he goes to the bullpen, because if he can't get it done, No, what are you going to do with him in the pen? I mean, you do innings as it he's is. I mean, go. he's going to walk a small village. He's going to give up a bunch <laughs> of hits. You You're know, right, I though. Mean, he's I mean, got to go what, to the it's gonna, you know, disabled list. You know, gasoline and kerosene, you know, and just watch it explode. And let's dive right in the first segment. This was a really perfect You got Zach McAllister. He's far a, He's pitched 36 in rehab since he's been down there. He's cooking. He's ready to go. He's been ready to come back up. And as we know, the, the, the timing issue was the reason he didn't make it back up a couple of weeks ago. So at this point, can the Indians afford sitting at 500, trying to make a push, can the Indians afford every fifth day to blow it back up again with Masterson? I think no, and they can't. Not if they're going to contend. I no mean, way. we're we're still in third place. We, you know, we're only what seven and a half, eight out, something like that. Um, you know, and you can't keep running him out there. Now, the point I was going to make was how many times have you seen somebody with like a say a minor injury or you know in this case the knee, and okay. last night in the bullpen. They were working on his stride. They were trying to shorten his stride by six inches. Okay? Yeah. Trying to take the pressure off of the back leg so he'd, he'd get, a, you know, more pressure on the front leg and, and more of a drive. Okay, I understand that. But how many times have you seen people that compensate for one injury and get another? Oh, we see that a lot. We see that quite a bit. Right. A lot of times that happens. Yes. So absolutely. why would you keep pushing him out there every five days, knowing that something's wrong with him? Why Bruce, not send was... him down to Triple A or Double A, and and let him get some work in until he feels you know like it's his knees all right, and then then bring him back. Bruce, I agree with you. We talked about it. I when they gave him those two days off last time around, what did I keep saying every day on the show? I said, okay, that's cool, but but it's if only it was two days. Simple, Right. If it was that simple, we would have done that a long time ago and been moved on with our day. You know what I mean? So clearly right. the problem is more than that. But I do believe, and you know I'm a Masterson guy, I want him to pull out of this because I do believe he's a pretty good pitcher at the end of the day. But 
I mean, you cannot blow up a season waiting. You've got guys. Now, if there were no options, if McAllister wasn't ready, if Salazar wasn't getting himself back into shape down there, then I go, okay, well, he's the best of what we've got. But he's not the best of what we've got right now. And I think you are doing a disservice Kind of like we talked last year about Brandon Whedon and making the decision to keep him at the quarterback. You've got an entire roster of guys who you're doing a disservice if you continue to not give them a chance to compete. Just like Brandon Whedon. I know I'm not trying to compare the two because I like Masterson. I didn't care for Whedon. But Masterson does not give you a chance to compete seven out of ten times. Just look at what he's done all season long. Did you catch the pitching last night? I mean, oh, not only yeah. were they hitting the ball, I mean, had the runner not fell down Did between third it? and home, it could have been worse. <laughs> I but, wasn't the only one that caught it. Every fielder caught it, too, because everything oh my was God, being he was, put He was over. throwing 55 feet, and then he would throw one to the backstop just to wake somebody up. You know, I think somebody was asleep, like, in the second row, and I think, he, you know, he bounced one off the backstop <laughs> to wake him up. You know, I mean, he had no clue where the ball was even going, and when he threw it down the middle... They hit it, and when he didn't, it hit somebody. I mean, and it wasn't getting better. Like, yeah, I'll be honest no. with you. My son, you guys know I talk about Jerry, and I watch the games all the time, and he's a he's a great one to bounce uh, bounce things off of. He And I get a kick out of his reactions. I don't say nothing. I don't set him up. I just let him talk. And, and uh, he was telling, he goes, man, I, I can't believe they set him back out there for the third. I said, well, you know, you, you don't want to pull a guy after two. He goes, Dad, he's terrible. Oh, my God, and, I would have uh, pulled him in, yeah, in an inning and a half. I mean, you know, I, said, I mean, an inning and a third, I would have got him out of there. He, he was getting nobody out oh, they were getting themselves out, out and they almost did because they had the pen warming up in the second inning but when the third inning started here i'm you know i'm dad knows a little bit more than the young guy i'm going well kid you gotta be patient with these guys let me let me tell you master well i don't know about all that but i mean no, the but balls he, were hitting all over the park it was making santana look like a gold glover at first but that's base. what i'm saying that's what I'm saying, Bruce. I go, I just got done telling my son, you just watch. Masterson's going to get himself together here in the third inning, and, and he'll get us to the fifth or so. And then what was it? Walk, hit, walk, whatever. Next thing you know, he's out of the game. And I go, um, never mind. Well, oh, don't forget he had to hit a guy son. before he could leave. I know. Of he, course. he has he like 11 you, hit batters this year. He, he had to give you a little bit of everything. On the, he was, I know. Just. Justin Masterson's if, just looking out for people. He was he wanted you to get your money's worth with that game ticket last night. And if that wasn't enough, then they brought in the guy to relieve him, and he gives up a walk and a balk. You Kyle know, it's Crockett, like, holy yeah. shit, we've seen it all. And then the, the Indians Rays did. The Indians did. Uh, they did. The bullpen did pull it together. The bullpen oh, did yeah. give you seven got his, strong. got his act together after the And the rest of them. Balk, hey, Carrasco but, continues to do what you know hey what he hasn't been able to do for so long for the indians and so on down the line even saw right. a little bit of work out of axford and they had a chance they got you know michael brantley of all of course gets on base in the ninth but you could i'll tell you what too i know we're up against the break but just a quick one when chisholm hall hit that ball for a half a second i thought he got a hold of it there in the ninth inning because he he got a good jump on the ball but it died down and uh, i'm not gonna lie when nick swisher came up last I know he did hit a grand slam and he did hit a home run to win a game, but sun shines on on both sides of every once in a while because I just knew. I said, man, of everybody that could be coming up with two outs in the in the bottom of the ninth here in the game on the line, man, I think I would pick anybody other than Nick Swisher. And I was as soon checking as he the, the ball, roster to see if anybody was available. <laughs> as soon um, as he hit the did ball, you happen I said, to catch the, that went too um, high. The uh, uh, Francona interview after the game. Uh, yeah, which parts? Because he was he was uh, where he it, said it, it uh, somebody asked him a question about um, now that you sent uh, the backup catcher to back to the minors. Does this make Santana your backup catcher? And for he now. said, he said um, for now, for now it does. Nah, yeah. not right at the moment, but um, you know, I, there's still some deals in the works. So, oh, well, yeah, because I still think Roberto Perez is very likely to end up here sooner rather than later. That's a prospect. Al Chimichella, who, of course, is overseas right now, but he's usually a minor league contributor for us during the season, man. He's he's had a big eye on him coming up for a while. I do believe that this is a short-term thing because I don't think they like Santana being the backup catcher, but I don't know. There's a lot no, in play here. He, 
he showed that he can play a little bit of first base. I mean, he had yeah. like 50. He only made the one barehanded uh, throw to the plate that he should have threw that he didn't. Yep. But Bruce, and then he threw man. it to first two. Like, I've got to get to the break, my man. I definitely appreciate the phone call. And uh, feel free. Oh, to not a problem, Jay Rock. My man, Bruce. Great phone call. Two one six. 539-7535 is the number to call. We'll talk more. I'll preview the Indians and the Yankees. You've got Tanaka coming out there tonight. Should be a good crowd. It's bobblehead night, and should be no reason for people to get out there, although definitely a little bit of rain falling early. Hopefully they get this out of the way here in Northeast Ohio. When we come back, we're going to shift gears, guys. My man LG from Cleveland Sports 360 is going to be joining us. He's got the latest on the Browns. Dropping a drug test on Johnny Manziel. We'll tell you more about that when we come back. Dr. Football Bill Checkis, he's on tap just about 15 minutes from now. Talk about the latest in the NFL and the Browns with him. We're talking LeBron Watch 2014. All the news of the day, your calls, and so much more. Don't go anywhere, baby. This is the Sports Fix, and we have just begun. The Sports Fix, the show that asks the question. We'll be right back. Before we go to the break, guys, I want to talk to you just a second about our friends at GV Art and Design. Baseball's here once again. Cleveland, of course, excited. And GV Artwork teaming up with the Indians. And they're both going to knock it out of the park this season. And listen to some of the new designs they've got for Cleveland baseball fans everywhere. They've dug out an old classic. And they're bringing the heat with the new wild thing, Give them the Heater Ricky design. GV Artwork is teaming up with Cleveland fan favorite Michael Brantley and created a custom Dr. Smooth t-shirt plus don't forget they've got the cleveland that i glove collection new tribal and cleveland that i love designs for women and so much more you can get gv artwork designs on the website gvartwork.com and don't forget to use the sales code fix 10 that's fix one zero and you'll save 10 percent on your purchase or you can check out their new store in lakewood on detroit avenue check them out in the indians team shops and so much more cleveland that we all love gv art and design. It's not just a shirt, it's a statement. Hello Cleveland! This is WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley and you are listening to the Sports Fix. Yeah! The engines are cranking and purring, and that can only mean one thing. Bike nights are back at Harry Buffalo North Olmstead. Rev up your hogs and head on down to Harry Buffalo North Olmstead every Monday night. Enjoy $3, $3 drinks, drinks and beers, $5 pizzas, and crazy, crazy wing specials, specials for, for all bikers, bikers, all on their open patio. Woo-hoo! Hot bikes, good friends, and great times are waiting for you. 4824 Great Northern Boulevard, right outside Great Northern Mall. Monday bike nights at Harry Buffalo. The, the proud, proud sponsor, sponsor of the Sports, sports Fix. fix. Sports Fix listeners, like us on Facebook today. Facebook.com slash the Sports Fix. Have you gotten your copy of Cleveland's Finest yet? Highlighting the best moments, players, and media members in Cleveland sports history? In-depth, personal interviews with some of the top names in Cleveland sports fill the pages of this incredible book. Cleveland's Finest by Vince McKee is this year's must-have book for every Cleveland sports fan. Available now at Amazon.com. Copy today. You're listening to The Sports Fix. Welcome back to the Sports Fix. We are live here on the sportsfix.net on TuneIn and Spreaker and Mixler, their radio apps worldwide, and we are on digital delay 24 7 on iHeartRadio, the world's largest internet radio provider, on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, CarPlay, SoundCloud, all the podcast platforms, and I'm sure there's even more places that I don't know about. 
that you can listen to the show. Welcome in each and every one of you guys. J-Rock back with you as we roll back into the show. Breaking news out of Miami from last night. About 3 o'clock in the morning, I heard Pat Riley's wife called him on the phone. She said, who are you talking to? He goes, it's Jake from State Farm. It wasn't Jake from State Farm. It was LeBron. He was begging him not to leave him hanging at the altar. That's the one part of this whole thing that uh, I can get behind. The rest of it, ah, pooey. But anyways, yeah, so, and by the way, she sounded hideous. Just letting you know that. Hey, guys, phone lines are closed, but you can keep the conversation going. Facebook and Twitter, facebook.com slash the sports fix. Tweet with us at the sports fix CLE. Keep the conversation going. I see my man Ron Graham is actually running the sports fix Twitter account for us today, and I see he is going to town already. A lot of conversation going on, including some reaction to Dave Borkus on Twitter says, Why would anyone rewatch the decision? I said, Exactly. That's the whole point that we were making there earlier on, and we'll keep talking about that on the anniversary of that day. And Anyways, welcome back into the show. Rolling back on. I'm going to go to the phones here momentarily because they're closed for you, but not for my next guest. He's LG from Cleveland Sports 360. My man, Larry Glicken, he's with us during Brown season. He does the pre- and post-game broadcast with us at Harry Buffalo for the Browns. And he's with us now because he hit me up this morning with, I don't want to say a bombshell, although it's definitely something that should have came, but it's something that hasn't yet. And, uh, well, I'll let him explain. We know Johnny Football. John Manziel never found a weekend he couldn't enjoy and a picture that somebody couldn't take of it. Well, his latest got a lot of things stirred up as we saw the mystery bathroom photo from Las Vegas where he is appears to be rolling a dollar bill into a straw. However, you know, hey, I'll leave it at that. There's nothing incriminating in this photo other than that. You can take that where you want. However, the Browns appear to be taking that the way a lot of people have taken it. And I'm going to talk more about that with LG. He's on the phone now. Larry, LG, my man. How you doing, Daddy? J-Rack Daddy, how you doing up there in What's Cleveland, up? Ohio today, man? I love talking to LG because he starts every conversation. And, guys, I don't just mean on the phone. When Larry emails me, when he texts me, when he reaches out to me in any way, it's always – J-Rock Daddy, what's happening? And I love it. LG, my man, I'm doing great. I hope you are, too. I'm doing fantastic, man. I'm a little bit concerned what's going on with Cleveland Sports. I'm a little bit uh, uh, taken back by this uh, Andy Baskin story you're talking about, him uh, putting the decision. That, that's a bad decision on his part. I agree with you wholeheartedly, like most of the time. Sometimes me and you don't agree, but this time we do agree. Uh, why anybody would re air uh, it's like putting salt in an open wound, man. They're trying you know to seal the deal. They're trying to get things going in a positive direction. Dan Gilbert took the letter off the website after four long years. Uh, uh, and and uh, now Andy now, Baskin now. just wants to uh, open the wound again. They didn't know that letter was still there. They took it down four years ago, they said, and they just didn't know that it was still there. <laughs> wink, wink, of course. Uh, I love that explanation from the Cavs yesterday. I'll be honest with you. Part of me really does buy that from what I know about websites, especially because what people don't understand is the Cavs don't run their own website. No NBA team runs their own website. If you go to clevelandcavaliers.com, or if you go to ChicagoBulls.com, MiamiHeat.com, they're all the exact same website, but with team-specific content. It's because, as a matter of fact, when, you guys remember when I was on the air at WHK, they had the same thing. All of their news talk stations had the exact same website with local content. All of the fish stations had the exact same website layout because it's done on a national level, and then you just fill in the local content. So, in all fairness... The Cavaliers don't control that. That really is on the NBA level, and they switched servers legitimately. So I, I can't lie. I do believe what they say. I honestly believe that they tried to take it off a year ago. Whenever the Cavs made the, I don't believe it was four years ago, but I do believe that whenever they decided we realistically are going to go after LeBron, which was probably about a year, a year and a half ago, that's when I do think they did take it off. Problem is, is that they, they didn't verify that it was off. So, But I do buy their story because the Cavs really don't control the HTML part of their own website. That comes from the NBA. So 
I, I do buy that story, but it was a little bit funny to hear him squirm about it. Like, no, no, we took that off years ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, today being the anniversary of uh, of LeBron's decision, <sighs> I, I really feel that we'll get a new decision before today is over, and I think that new decision will be LBJ coming back and playing for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Let's face it, his skills uh, camp starts tomorrow on the ninth down in Akron, Ohio. I think LeBron wants to clear the air before the skills camp uh, takes part, uh, takes place, I should say. And I think before today's over, J Rock Daddy, we're going to get a new decision, and that new decision, uh, the new decision is going to turn a lot of heads. Uh, don't you agree, J Rock Daddy, or what? All right. As a Cleveland guy, I, I've done this already here, LGZ, man. As a Cleveland guy, I want Cleveland to win. Just anything that we can win, I'm happy with winning it. And if it makes if it makes the rest of the nation We all want to win, baby. We hey, all want to win. Brother, if yeah, it makes we... the rest if it makes the rest of the country mad, I'm all for it. Let's make them all angry. But but that being said, I've got to go back to what I say until and I know which way all the winds are blowing and all the signs are pointing towards that. I still say that until LeBron James sits down with Pat Riley and walks out, that's when I will believe that he is considering moving, leaving Miami, whatever. Because I still believe that if Pat Riley sits down and tells LeBron what he wants, basically... I think LeBron is looking for Pat Riley to give him a reason to leave Cleveland, and Pat Riley's hoping to give him a reason to stay. I think that if Pat Riley laid down something that that LeBron Correct, believed in, Miami, stay. not Cleveland, Miami. Right. That's what I'm talking about. No, no, no. I think LeBron wants the plan to stink. He wants to be able to go, no, I'm walking away from that. But I do believe that if there's a rabbit in the hat, if there's something, whether it's Carmelo Anthony, if there's something that Pat Riley plays that appeals to LeBron, I really do believe he will decide to stay on a shorter contract and stay for another couple of seasons. But that being said, the the winds of change are all around. And I don't know if what the Heat have done is enough to keep him. They did make a couple of moves. They signed Josh McRoberts. Well, the moves they they're making Danny right Granger. now, some of it is uh, not quality moves. I mean, some of these guys have a long history of injury after injury. I don't think these are the caliber players that are going to be strong enough to keep a LeBron James in the Miami Heat. Let's remember, LeBron's what, 29 now, j Rock. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's been in the league for 11 years, closing in on a dozen. You know, I mean, yeah. And you know what's funny? Knees, he's so polarizing, LG. Right down before and after every game. Uh, he, you know, let's let's be realistic. Father time slows us all down, as we all know. And, uh, you know, Speak the, for the, yourself. The, the thing is, he's got so many good years left. <laughs> I don't think he's going to spend any more of those in Miami. I think he did what he wanted to do. He played with his two buddies, Wade and Bosch. I think all good things must come to an end. Unfortunately, that's the sports world we live in today. It always does come to an end. Every professional athlete has to step aside sooner or later. And before that happens, LeBron James is going to return to the Cleveland Cavaliers. I think it was set up that way when he left. I think that was part of his original decision that he knew he would come back. The wounds that he created with Dan Gilbert, let's face it, Gilbert's a businessman. It's nothing but good news for the city of Cleveland and downtown, economically speaking, if LeBron James returns. Now, I will tell you that I'm with you there. Like I said, I'm all about the civic pride of it. I want Cleveland to kick Miami's tail. I want the rest of the nation. I want Twitter to break because LeBron well, here, said he's going back here, to here's Cleveland. Here's the last straw that uh, could on, help LG. you. Uh, Hold, just right, the last me, straw. Me, go ahead. Go ahead. The last straw is... I do believe Kyrie Irving knows LeBron James is coming back to the Cleveland Cavaliers. I think that was a big push to have Kyrie stay and sign that big max contract the Cavs gave him. Uh, All during the season, all preseason last year with the Cavaliers, all we heard was rumor after rumor about Kyrie not being happy. Uh, I know you didn't think uh, LeBron James really wanted to play with Kyrie Irving. I always had a strong feeling that LeBron James does want to play with Kyrie Irving. And I bet you if we were to catch Kyrie alone and put him in a bathroom and tell him we're not letting out until you speak the truth, he would admit LeBron James is going to be wearing the wine and gold before you know it. 
Well, the word this morning is that supposedly at least one Cleveland Cavaliers current player has been contacted by LeBron telling him that he's uh, coming back there. I'm, I'm interested. Listen, this whole thing has become funny to watch, the whole LeBron watch. But again, I'm going to wrap it up, and this will show you how polarizing yeah, and how engaging this is, is that we're talking Browns with LG, and the first 10 minutes of it are talking about LeBron. But really, that is what's yeah. on. No, no, but it's what's on everybody's tip of the tongue. I understand that. Like, right. matter of fact, my former uh, boss at WHK, him, you know, Joe Sweeney and I, very close, he follows along with the show. He hit me up last night. He goes, because he knows my LeBron policy for the last two years. It's been, we don't do that. You guys know, we don't talk about LeBron until it's time to, you know, talk about this. Like, once free and agency time actually coming, hits. Well, that's what I said yesterday. Joe Sweeney hits me up and he goes, so uh, talking a little LeBron today, huh? I said, yeah, circumstances dictate that today is the day it's okay to talk about LeBron. Yes, we are going back to that discussion now. But uh, anyways, it is what it is. This is interesting to watch. And uh, again, it's all drawn out and dramatic, which part of that, I'm just going to be honest, doesn't sit the best with me either, to be totally, totally honest. If I'm being fair, maybe this isn't the decision part two, but it's coming off a lot like the same process, just done a little bit differently. And just because Cleveland wins this time doesn't make it all that different. Although, hey, at the end of the day, I'm happy when Cleveland wins anything. But let's switch gears because this is something equally as important to the future of another Cleveland franchise. We're talking Browns. We talked about Johnny Manziel and the photo that was taken over the weekend. You can go wherever you want with the photo. But clearly, according to the information that you have, LG, the Browns have gone in the direction that a lot of people have assumed when they look at a picture of of someone in a bathroom rolling up a dollar bill into a straw. There's very few activities that that fits into, and I think the Browns are quite worried. Go ahead and tell me what you've heard from inside Berea. Well, i got to tell you, J-Rock, I was contacted last night about 10 uh, 10 p.m. by a very, very reliable source inside the Browns organization, and the Browns are very, very disheartened with Johnny Manziel's picture of the rolled-up bill in the bathroom. Uh, They're going to give Johnny Manziel a drug test. A lot of people don't think the Browns have a right to give Manziel a drug test, but as you and I both know, the CB, the uh, collective bargaining agreement that the NFL Players Association signed gives each team the right to randomly test any player on their roster any time they feel they need to do so. Now, with that being said, This isn't going to be a urine test. This is going to be a hair follicle test. And the problem with urine tests, as you know, there's ways to mask things. There's ways to uh, cover up any kind of illegal drug activity. And we're not saying Manziel's doing drug activity, but as you know, and as I know from my days in the rock and roll bands, uh, there was a lot of bill rolling up back in the 70s and the <laughs> early 80s in the city of Cleveland. And I can tell you this, never once was one of those dollar bills being rolled up used for an antenna for the money phone, like somebody posted as a comment to my article this morning. But, it couldn't be. They didn't have money phones back then. So, I mean, well, that's clearly. It. <laughs> that's it. But what I want to tell you is this. The problem is when you do a hair follicle test, any kind of drugs or narcotics or anything in your system shows up for a period of one year. So Manziel is uh, already combating the situation, trying to tell the Cleveland Browns he was just fooling around, okay? He was just kidding, okay? The Browns are not falling for this. They are very, very pissed off, pardon my French, over the fact that this picture was leaked. They've tried to take Manziel to the side. They've tried to talk to him. They've had, I mean, let's face it, this guy is an ego, an egotistical maniac. He's an egomaniac that thinks his uh, way is above everybody else's way. He's 21 years old. He's got all the answers in the world. He knows it all. He's not going to change for anybody. And that's after Haslam came out and asked Manziel, 
to slow it down a little bit with the social media stuff and to represent the Cleveland Browns in a better realm than he's been previously representing them. Let's face it, Jay Wright, Daddy. The let me jump in real quick. Let me let me jump in real quick. L- of a LG. football team. LG, hold on before you go into that. I just want to remind people for those of you listening that may not know, LG, he's with Cleveland Sports 360. Larry Glicken, just for those of you going, well, how, where does this source come from? Where, LG, hey, he was ahead of the curve, and I'm not talking about the most recent Josh Gordon stuff. I'm talking last year. I'm talking with you know, LG when he tells you that somebody in Berea told him something. He he's got the scoop. He doesn't get them all, but the ones he does get. They're dead on. So when LG's telling you this, you can take it to the bank that this is going on behind the scenes. Maybe the Browns won't write you a letter and tell you, yeah, we drug tested John Manziel. But I'm telling you, take well, wait, let's talk it. about the reason why the Cleveland Browns will drug test Johnny Manziel. There's a reason for this, J-Rock. And the reason why is if the Browns take the lead on something like this, let's say that they do go ahead and drug test Manziel, and God forbid that this test comes out positive, there's a key reason why the Cleveland Browns are taking a proactive approach here. The reason is simple. It's they can't afford to take the risk of the NFL putting out a drug test on Johnny Manziel. Because if the Browns do it themselves, they can take the proactive approach. They can approach the NFL. All of this will keep quiet will be kept out of the media it will not be released to the media if a team does this and finds a positive test they can approach the nfl and they can put this guy in a program and they'll say they got him in a program now they're working on this drug addiction or drug problem or drug usage or whatever however you want to look at it but there's a proactive reason the browns can't afford to have another josh gordon incident and they certainly can't afford to have it with a first-round draft pick. Number 22 is an albatross for the, for the city of Cleveland, and especially the <laughs> Cleveland Browns. Why they traded down and picked Johnny Manziel with the 22nd overall pick is insane, because we all saw what happened with the last 22nd pick. Oh, don't and do it. Don't we, do it. Well, don't you know, all Brandon Weed. I mean, you <laughs> talked about them earlier in the show I today. but. It. Why? Why the hell would you even risk it? Why would you? Why would you go? Well, it's tenth fate. Maybe this number twenty-two is going to be better. Now let's take it a one step further with the Josh Gordon incident that's happening right now in the league. And this guy gets pulled over with a DUI. Now you know I feel bad for Josh Gordon if you can actually believe that. I did not feel bad when he was busted in Strongville with marijuana in the car. And let's clarify that his buddies had marijuana in the car. It wasn't in Josh Gordon's pocket. But the police officer smelled the stuff burning when he came and approached the car. It wasn't like they brought out a canine dog and he had to sniff the car and find a bag of pot. The, the, the smell <laughs> came right out of the car window into the officer's face. I did not feel sorry. But just this last Saturday, he blew a point zero nine. J J-Rock. You know, know as well as I do, any one of us could have probably blew a point zero nine. But what the Browns can't afford with Johnny Manziel is another Josh Gordon incident. The city of Cleveland is already embarrassed when it comes to NFL football franchises, considering from 1999 till now, we have a a lock on losing. Uh, The same people that I talk to inside the Browns, once in a while they kid around and and they make jokes about the city of Cleveland, especially the Cleveland Browns, have a book, How to Screw Up Professional Football Franchises. Now, Picking Manziel, but let's take this one step further. There's there's almost a mutiny on hand in Cleveland already because Ray okay. Farmer and Mike Patton did not want to draft Johnny Manziel. The same sort of drug tested story. Say there's all kinds of arguing going on behind the scenes, and you're not going to see Ray Farmer come out and say I didn't want Johnny Manziel on my football team. You're not going to see Mike Patton, but you did hear Jimmy Haslam the third guy. Told me to pick oh, Johnny Manziel. We well, a homeless guy doesn't even buy tickets to a football. But now you got a guy on your team that is more cockier than anybody in Cleveland Browns uniform. We're going back to the quarterback position. That's supposed to be a leader on you to calm down. And, and, and let's forget about the Browns organ. Same greats give him advice that Manziel has shown. And it came out and made statements to Manziel. Uh, Emmett Smith came out and made. Doesn't even care what these people have to say, man. Larry, 
I'm with you on that side. I do have to correct one thing you said. When you mine, I disagree. I can't because I love to have a good time. But I can honestly say that the minute that I begin, I never have, I never will. I've got a thing about that. But so I do disagree because I wouldn't have blown a .09 because I wouldn't have been driving. But that's just at the game. I make sure I've got somebody else driving just because. Fantastic, you know, man. You know that, that, I mean? That's the way to do it. But, but I'm, not, I'm not even bringing it. I was just joking. Everybody, I'm just kidding. But you are right. right. And it's definitely a lot of concern. Hey, brother, I mean, I think a lot of reality will come crashing down on the shoulders of John Manziel. Maybe. But uh, I am up against it, LG. I've got to get going. I'm, here, I'm here, keep... here's, here's, let's just put one more thought out there. Yeah. Uh, when we, there was talk about not giving Brian Hoyer a contract. It's, it's a red alert. Let's give uh, Brian, let's keep him here for years. Why do you think there's a flip-flop on this? The Browns are very big of Johnny Manziel. They don't think they're going to get the leadership qualities out of this kid that's a good leader. He, he thinks he knows it all. He's not going to be the guy that other players are going to look up to. And, you know, there's something to be said to the Larry. game. He sits in his house and has a couple beers with his buddy and watches Larry. the game fill. You hit the nail on the head. The day they drafted Manziel, Brian Hoyer wasn't going to have a spot on the roster by the time training camp was over. Now, the Browns want to re-sign him to an extension and get him in, get him under contract now. Like you said, there's a reason for that right there. But hey, listen, man. Let's just, let's just put one more nail in the coffin of Johnny Manziel. I don't want to put nails right. in. See, here's the thing, though. This is what sucks. As much as I did not want the Browns to draft that kid because of all of the things that we're talking about now, he is on the Browns now, and the last damn thing that I want to do is put any more nails in his coffin. I wish he would just get his crap together and go out there and quarterback the damn football team. But go ahead and, and finish but your point. J-Rock, we're not actually putting the nails in the coffin. He's I know, doing a I great know. job himself. I agree. Nails in the coffin. No, so I nobody, agree with you. Nobody has to help the kid. He's stupid enough. I, you know, that's what kills me, J-Rock. If you had an opportunity, this is the thing that blows me away with the Josh Gordon incident. If you had an opportunity to be the very best at something in the world, Josh Gordon could have been maybe the all-time best receiver that ever played in the NFL. We're never going to find then, that out. This guy is stupid enough to throw it all away. Then you got a guy like Johnny Manziel that comes in, thinks he knows it all, thinks his ego is bigger than the life itself, and he look. You, you know, you should be looking at a Josh Gordon incident, and you should be going, "Man, I can't go down that track. Why would I risk everything?" You know, the most important thing to Manziel is the money. Okay, we all know that. You're risking all of that, J. Rock, by his antics, hanging out with Justin Bieber. How good can hanging out with Justin Bieber be for anybody, J-Rock? I know. Hey, listen, Larry, I understand, and I really do hope that uh, – I hope this all works out for everybody, but this is all part of the reasons why not just the Browns, but many people bringing this in. Hey, listen, it is what it is. It's a, it's a I'll tell you be, one thing right now, J-Rock. I'll keep you be, posted. I'm sure I'm going to hear the results of what happens uh, probably before anybody else does. And uh, I do have a very good source, and uh, I, I'm pleasure. Uh, it's a pleasure to have people like that. I work hard on Cleveland Sports 360. They respect what I do. You know me, Jay Rock. I always write the truth, uh, no matter what other people think of it. Uh, I've been bashed for years, and it doesn't bother me because I know at the end of the day I can go to bed at night and sleep well because I speak the truth. I write the truth, and uh, you know this Manziel thing really has me disgusted because. You know, I didn't want to draft them either. We don't have the power to say who we're going to draft, who we're not going to draft. But I'm disgusted if the Cleveland Browns, in turn, threw out another first-round draft pick. That'll be three in the last two seasons, J-Rock. And you if just I was can't the Browns, win football if, games throwing away first-round draft picks like that. If I'm the Browns, when I set up my draft board for the future... It goes 21, 23. I don't even put the number 22 on the board. But, Larry, here's one last thing I want from you. One last thing I want from you is when you get the backside of this story, when you find out if he passes this drug test or what happens behind the scenes, I definitely want you to follow up with us here and let me know as soon as you know what the next part of that story is. Well, you got it, J-Rock, Daddy. It's always a pleasure being on the Sports Fix. You know that. Uh, you're on there all the time, man, but uh, it's, a, it's a real treat for me to be uh, joining J-Rock Daddy on the Sports Fix. Uh, and, and i got to tell you, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just disgusted, and I hope 
I hope this turns out good, but I got to tell you, Jay Rock, when people are in the bathroom and all have bills, uh, it just never does really turn out that good. I'll tell you what, the first time Josh Gordon was suspended and you told me and we told everybody on the sports fix and they said, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. A few months later, right. they said, man, LG had it first. So, Larry, thank you for the scoop. What about when I said Korea we didn't and suck? I, Nobody well, thought I was I told <laughs> people we didn't suck after the first preseason game. Uh, on I got to cut you what off. Was it? August, I'm, I'm August done. I'm, I'm the bartender. Man. I'm the bartender. You're cut off, Larry. You went to Brandon Whedon one too many times. I love you, man. All I right, love brother. you, man. Hey, have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. You too. That's LG. You guys can check him out, of course, on Cleveland Sports 360. I'm going to take a break, get you some news. And when we come back, the doctor's in the house. Dr. Football Bill Chekis picks up the conversation. We'll talk about the latest. The NFL again appears to have a settlement settled here for people to start getting paid on the concussion lawsuit. Jim Brown says his ring was stolen now it's up for auction from the 64 championship we'll talk nfl news and notes the giants say they would have never drafted john manzel for the same reasons that we're talking about right now dr football bill check is on tap the top of the hour coming your way phone calls and so much more our dose of the sports fix coming up next baby everybody's gonna pay as the million dollar man Always It's his way <laughs> money, 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 money. The Sports Fix Your choice for intelligent talk I'm expecting a very important delivery at the house So could you please call me if it arrives I'll give you my cell number 401-555-1125 Oh. 40 Four, four, zero. No, no, I was just repeating the four. One, four. One, four. Yeah, intelligent talk. Okay, one, one, two, five. One, one, two, five. One, five, five. I'm not giving you quantities of the numbers. I'm giving you the numbers. One, one, two, five. Those are the last four numbers. Oh, I see. One, one, two, five. Yes. All right, now read the number back to me. Let me get my pen. The Sports Fix will be right back. Guys, want to take just a second as we head into this break and remind you about the official business printing source of the Sports Fix, our friends at Signs and Ship. Signs and Ship, I'm telling you, Chris and Pam, they've taken care of me since day one, and they can do the same for you. Whether you're a small business that's already been established and you're looking to grow to that next level and expand your business, or perhaps you've got an idea that you just know is going to be a great business and you need to figure out how to brand it and how to promote it and put it out there, Signs and Ship is the place for you. If you need a logo, they can create one for you. They have a fantastic graphic designer. Business cards, signs, banners, yard signs, mobile advertising, anything you can think of that you need to promote your business, they've got it at Signs and Ship. The best thing about them, too, is each of their locations, whether it's the home base here in Elyria, Ohio that I work with, or their spots in Virginia, Florida, and Pennsylvania. It's all local sourced. Very important to me because we all understand that small business is the lifeblood of the community. So check them out, signsandship.com, or call Chris and Pam today, 440-323-6060, the home office in Elyria, Ohio. Signs and Ship, quality printing at affordable prices. Hi, this is Joe Tate, and you're listening to The Sports Fix. Whether it's an oil change or a new set of tires, Quick Lane at Valley Ford Truck has you covered for your automotive car care needs. They're your neighborhood quick service experts. They also offer a low price tire guarantee. Choose from 13 brands, and if you find the same tires at a lower price within 30 days, Quick Lane at Valley Ford will refund the difference. They're open late Monday through Thursday until 9 p.m. and open early Saturday so you can check it off your to-do list and get on with your day. They also have a newly remodeled service lounge and additional service bay just for Quick Lane oil changes. Quick Lane at Valley Ford Truck is located at 5715 Canal Road, right under the 480 Bridge in Valley View, just down the road from Independence. 5715 Canal Road, right under the 480 Bridge in Valley View, just down the road from Independence. Come see why life is better in the Quick Lane. Quicklane.com slash Valley Ford Truck. That's quicklane.com slash Valley Ford Truck.
business owners and professionals. Do you want to take your business, your product, your team, your event to the next level? You want to advertise right here with the Sports Fix. Our listeners are among the most loyal listeners, terrestrial or internet. The Sports Fix universe is not only the radio show, but tens of thousands of fans on Facebook and Twitter. Email me, Jerry Myers, the Sports Fix at AOL.com. That's the Sports Fix at AOL.com. And let me help you swing for the fences and hit it out of the park right here on the Sports Fix. Portions of the Sports Fix brought to you by Harry Buffalo. Harry Buffalo, join the herd. News break. I'm Christine Lisi. Here's what's happening. The World Cup semifinals kick off today with the host country Brazil taking on Germany. Free Eastern on ESPN and ESPN Radio. Brazil, of course, missing injured star Neymar. Sidelined 45 days by a fractured vertebra. Its captain, Thiago Silva, out as well because of a yellow card suspension. Those losses will be tough for Brazil to overcome, says ESPN FC analyst Stuart Holden. It's going to be a tough game for them against the Germans. Germany have just looked so, the way they played is so intelligent. It's so disciplined. They're such a a strong unit that's hard to beat and hard to break down. And I, I can't see Brazil getting past them if they don't get any production from their strikers. And I, I don't see that happening against the uh, German center half. Argentina faces Netherlands in the other semi tomorrow, 3 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN Radio. Baseball Angels righty Jared Weaver left last night's game after two scoreless innings with lower back tightness. He's hoping the issue won't linger too long. Pirates put righty Garrett Cole on the DL with a sore back. Philadelphia's Cliff Lee will return from a strained left elbow after the All-Star break. He could start July 19th in Atlanta against the Braves. The certified service experts at your Buick dealer would like you to think about anything but the maintenance of your Buick. That's their job. If you don't know worry-free service, you don't know Buick Certified Service. Visit BuickCertifiedService.com for the latest service offers and everyday value pricing. You're listening to The Sports Fix. Welcome back to the Sports Fix. We are live. Hour two underway right here on the Sports Fix. The SportsFix.net. Tune in and Spreaker and Mixler and their mobile applications worldwide and on digital delay 24-7 on iHeartRadio, the world's largest internet radio provider on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, all the other podcast formats, places I may have forgotten, places I may not know exist. Welcome into the Sports Fix. J-Rock back with you. As I said, hour two. We're going to the phone lines in just a minute to talk to my man, Dr. Football. He is with us each and every Tuesday here on the show. That's one of the cool things I love is the regular guys that we have here on the show. And you get, you know, it's it's great to have people, no matter what, whatever's topical. But, you know, those guys that are here every week, you kind of build that rapport and you get to know a guy and what he how he feels about things i have always liked that doctor football been with us for years here always fun on tuesdays to have bill join us and to have you join us all the time phones aren't open but everything else is so hit us up on facebook or twitter now facebook.com slash the sports fix tweet with us at the sports fix cle all one word or email us the sports fix at AOL.com. J-Rock back with you. Going to the phones. My next guest, as I said, the doctor is indeed in the house. Dr. Football. Bill, check us. Bill, how you doing? How was your holiday weekend, my man? My holiday weekend was very good, Jerry. Thank you. And I have to tell you, I got a couple of early birthday presents already. My birthday's not for about another 10 days, but uh, I'm sitting here next to one of them, and uh, I'm going out to take some target practice in the backyard a little later with my new crossbow. Well, there you go, and it's very good to have you back on the show here. As never a shortage of things we talked about, things getting slow, and I use the air quotes on the radio here, things getting slow for the next couple of weeks, obviously, and we've been on it here uh, before you joined a lot yesterday, and of course, Johnny Manziel here, and I, you know what, I'm going to start there, because I don't know, you may not know this, I got the scoop just a few minutes ago from one of my guys behind the scenes, apparently going to ask John Manziel to submit 
to a random drug screening, a hair follicle test. Have you be uh, just to verify? Larry went through and said, "Yes, indeed, in the collective bargaining agreement, a team can do that." Can you verify that that indeed is is okay? And have you heard anything about that? Well, first of all, uh, I had only heard a little rumor about it in the last hour. So uh, your source is fresh, and and it is right off. It's not even on the wire yet. It's it's on the grapevine, though. Uh, it is in the CBA. I I have heard of it. It's in the current CBA. It was one of the things that uh, the commissioner and the owners got installed in the drug policy in order for players to get a larger percentage of the gross. Uh, they wanted, you know, they wanted uh, teams to be able to have this in their pocket if they were concerned about a player to uh, put this in action, put this in play. Uh, I know that uh, there are at least five other, I can't, I'm not sure who they are, but there are at least five other players that are currently under submission for the same test, according to my source at 280 Park. That's what I've heard so far. I just wanted to drop that on you first thing there because a lot of people, the first things that they asked us was, well, can they do that? I had several people on Twitter say, are they even allowed? And we've clarified that one. And again, you know, it's simple. The Browns, you can say insinuation. And that's why I've been careful as we've talked about, you know, I mean, again, it's a picture of a guy rolling up a dollar bill in a window. That's all it is as far as we're concerned for now. But clearly the Browns took the same insinuation from the photo that we did and I'm I'm guessing it's more just airing on the side of caution I'd be willing to bet that the Browns I mean clearly they're going into this hoping that there's nothing but I think that seeing what's going on with the Josh Gordon situation and seeing all of that senses are obviously more heightened in Berea right now you already had focus on Manziel but it looked taking the Johnny football circus out of the equation Clearly, the Browns are going to be going forward more sensitive about these type of issues, seeing the Josh Gordon thing. And as LG said, being proactive instead of being seen as the club that has no control and everybody's just off doing their thing and the the club has nothing to do with it. At least this way, you get in front of the horse a little bit, assuming, of course, whatever else happens there, you know, following up on that. Well, first of all, I hope LG's doing well. Uh, I haven't spoke to him in a long time, Jerry, so please send him my regards. And uh, secondly, most importantly, uh, is the fact that uh, teams are doing the due diligence with this. You know, you can't blame uh, Ray Farmer and, and Coach Petten. They want to make sure that, um, you know, he could be his bad boy image all he wants, as long as he's, you know, sticking to alcohol and doesn't have a problem with that either. And, uh, you know, he's not indulging in illegal drugs. I'm sure he's also going to be tested for performance enhancers. Everybody is. Everybody has to urinate in a cup. I hate to say it. You know, I had to do it in the Army. These guys have to do it for their contracts. And like I told LG, by the way, he just sent me a message and said, shout out to you too as well, Dr. Football. But as I told him, I'm interested in seeing as well the back end of that too. And I I did find it interesting that they chose to bypass the standard urinalysis and go with the more extensive hair follicle testing. But clearly they want to, and you know what? Hey, not just because he's an athlete, not just because he's a young athlete and you look out for him. That's People look at things from just one part of the envelope there's a lot of reasons he's an investment he's a high draft pick he's a potential franchise quarterback he's just a young kid that you want to help if you can there's a lot of reasons why to do that i've got to tell you that to me it does some people go oh the browns this and that to me it it's not a big deal at all and it's something that if the browns if i heard that they weren't concerned enough to do this i'd be more worried about it because that's bothered me lately i know that legally there's certain things that they can't say about Josh Gordon, but to continue to trot out the, we will comment at the appropriate time. I understand your hands are tied in certain aspects, but man, that really gives the glare publicly of blushing things off and of, of, of hoping that it blows away or buying yourself time to have to deal with it and maybe not wanting to make statements that players I don't I'm not say pussyfooting around players but that's kind of it trying to stay neutral when they need to stay much more I don't want to say vigilant but much more aggressive when they address things like this like to me 
the statement about Josh Gordon begins and ends with this will not be tolerated. Behavior like this, it's not just not tolerated in the Browns organization. It's not tolerated by an NFL player. And you can guarantee we're going to investigate. We're going to get the details and there will be consequences. And we will inform you of those consequences later. That sounds a lot better than we'll comment at the appropriate time. Yeah, and you know, there's a reason why there's a reason why teams do that. There's a reason why they they want to stay uh, non-committal for as long as possible. They don't want to be brought on the carpet by the commissioner, you know, for uh, saying something out of turn. You know, it's really up to a point where if you have to comment on disciplinary matters, you know, you want to get the okay from the league office first before you you know come out and say anything. Uh, on paper or uh, in the media, you know, Bill, and uh, but, but but Bill, you is know? it that Go or ahead. do they not do they not want to be committal because they don't want agents of players who might come and play for their team to think that they're going to have to answer for certain things or that they've got a more vigilant front office because I think that's every bit as much of it as worrying about what the commissioner is going to say is worrying how other players around the league look at that because you don't want to get the reputation for being the kind of franchise that butts into too much of people's fun time now do you? We can't possibly interfere with people's vacations now can we <laughs> well that's part those are two parts of it but the third part is um you know you really don't want to draw a lawsuit okay you I don't know. want to draw a lawsuit from from you know the player's side whether it be from uh you know the players association in particular but let me ask you, you know, or you know, go ahead no, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean I was with, say, with us not no, being okay. in the I was same. Say, you don't want a lawsuit from either the Players Association or from that player's agent, that player's camp. Now, so for those of you guys that are new to the show, it's hard sometimes to not talk over each other when we're in a different studio. But I, I'm hearing what you're saying. But that statement that I just made, which was one of our players got. Uh, was arrested over the weekend and is suspected of a DWI. We are investigating and gathering the details. When we find out the details, should a punishment be merited, you, we will, you know, lay it out swiftly and we will report these to you. To me, what can you get sued about for saying that? Because all you're saying is we know it, we won't tolerate it, and if we find out it's true, there will be swift consequences, and if not, then we're, there will be no consequences. That That's nothing you can get sued over. That still I agree. sounds better than we're going to comment at the appropriate time. Well, I agree with you, but that's not the way that some teams play it. And let me give you an example. We will go back a couple of years to when I was still working on the East Coast and living on the East Coast, and I had just left um, a New York Jets practice during New York Jets training camp when they were still in Long Island, about eight minutes from where I was living at the time. And um, my wife, who was my intrepid photographer as well as my, my life partner, and I are moving up uh, Hempstead Turnpike, heading to uh, grab some dinner, you know, get a bite to eat. And um, we sit in the restaurant, we have a good time, and we come out of the restaurant, um, and we are uh, back down the turnpike to go to a late press conference, and uh, we see a uh, very, very expensive car pulled over on the side of the road by the Nassau County Police, and um, it is obviously, by the person standing outside leaning against the fender, one of the players in jet camp, okay, won't say who, because he's no longer on the team, and I don't believe he's any longer in professional football at all. But um, this was a lineman. You can obviously tell he was getting written up. He was getting a breathalyzer test because we pulled over, and uh, we watched from the other corner, which was next to a city park, so we and, uh, the guy the guy obviously flunked the DUI because they put him in handcuffs and took him away. Jets not make a statement, Jerry. But even that is now obvious. So some people have said that that about Josh Gordon, and even this is the example a lot of people equate to Josh Gordon anyway. But uh, even more, there's no keeping him on the team and helping him at the same time. He needs as knowing that he has no team getting back in the NFL without you can provide him all the help and all the resources that he needs. He will never. And this was Chris Carter's own word. As long as he's not cut, much like Chris Carter, he has to be cut loose 
and really below rock bottom for him to have a chance to turn himself around. And while that the Browns, and this is why I was asking this yesterday on the air, is is there a better support system if the Browns team than if they cut him loose? But now that I know that there's no difference whatsoever, I agree. You have to... And I know the Browns are scared to lose that talent and have him show up somewhere else. But like John McMullen said yesterday, it is going to be at least a season, if not two, before that is even a concern. The Browns have to cut him loose for his own good and let him hit rock bottom. And I know that sounds wrong. The NFL is different. I'm not talking about the NFL. They need to put their arms around him and help that man. But the Browns have to start that process by cutting him loose. Yeah, I can agree with that for the most part. The only thing I don't agree with, uh, you know, if uh, you know, if they do not have him in a program already, uh, they should cut him or suspend him. If they're not going to cut him, because he is a valuable player, they should suspend him, which he's already suspended. But they should make the suspension official and make it. it that he, it's not, there's no time period. There's no year or six months or how many games right, or whatever. Indefin- until he can prove to Ray Farmer and Coach Petten that he tests or a follicle test or whatever test they want to give him, blood test, whatever, but that he can prove that he has rehabbed himself, that he's been to a rehab program. And I'm not talking about some you know, 12-step, 30-day thing, because those work for some people, but those don't work on professional athletes with unlimited or very, very, or very, very unlimited income. You know, he needs to be on a, on a life program where he needs to be in a facility for 90 days or 180 days, not 30 days. And I'll tell you what, that the argument for those of you that want to that want to look at it as a fan, strictly from the talent and the football perspective, what you just said, Bill, was kind of what I pitched to John yesterday was a a, a indefinite suspension, not only because that keeps him under uh, on uh, within the team's grasp as far as helping him, but contract, and that will freeze the time left on his contract, which means whether it takes a year two years, who knows, nobody else can sign him before the Browns get that final uh, 12 months or however much is on track. That's usually how that goes. But that's, to me, even that's looking at it from the football, are just looking at it for, well, he'll just play for another team. This man is going to have to earn his way back into the NFL, not because he smokes pot. I'm not making that argument because that's thing. It is called an indefinite suspension for a reason. It's the kind where you're no longer automatically reinstated when the last like serving your sentence. But when that last day comes out, instead of getting out, you've still got to sit there and ask if they can let you go and wait until somebody lets you sit. The league lets him back in. So he'll have to prove why this is not going to be a closed ended six months, six games, eight games, a year, whatever it is add to the league for reinstatement. So there is no guarantee Josh Gordon plays football again. But that being said, he's so friggin' young. No guarantee he doesn't either because there is no reason. Whether you want to look at a Chris Carter, look at uh, Honey Badger, who even he had some comments about him. Had problems, have straightened themselves out and come back to the game. And that is there. He's young enough and he's good enough that that's there for Josh Gordon. But he's got to want it. He's got to do it himself at the end of the day. Yeah, no question about that. And, you know, the other thing we're dealing with is, uh, you know, uh, marijuana does not have the same stigmata now that it did even five years ago, all right? And, you know, we have 23 states that have it legalized for medical uh, consumption, for, for medical issues. There is a bold movement going on in this country to try to get it uh, decriminalized, if not completely legalized. And who knows uh, what will happen another five years down the road, you know, that uh, it'll be something that can be bargained into the CBA if a guy is proven he can use it for uh, medicinal purposes or for whatever. 
uh, you know, I know for a fact it's, uh, you know, it's a very good treatment for people uh, suffering from severe forms, you know, yeah. uh, relieve the nausea from the medications, and it also helps them uh, keep the meal down. So, uh, you know, nobody is more sympathetic and passionate about stuff like education coming from a teaching and coaching background, you know, you know who have washed out on painkillers. And, uh, you know, I've seen guys that were, they became addicted to painkillers. About that sneeze there, by the way, I couldn't hit the mute button fast enough. I was looking for the mute button and I said, well, I'm with you, Dr. Football. You're listening to the Sports Fix. J-Rock and Dr. Football here talking about the Browns. We talked Johnny Manziel and Josh Gordon and their issues. Hey, let's segue off into a little bit of a, of a different thing here. A couple of things I wanted to talk to you before we go our separate ways for the week. I know you along with the concussion lawsuit and the different steps of the way. I see once again, and I'm, I'm slightly I'm not confused, but I know that they had an a was kind of repealed. Now they've once again vote to start making out the payments. And basically, correct me, if I researched here. The only major difference is the cap. They had a six hundred cap on the damages, and they have now taken that off. Meaning, even though they don't expect the damages to go past that, I guess that was the thing that was the holdup. Now and apparently, now that's been again preliminarily approved. Yes, one of the one of the lawyers involved, uh, Mike Hausfeld and his firm, in keeping me in the loop and uh, over there, Jim Mitchell, because he's kept me into all the uh, uh, on, uh, from the player side. And uh, again, we thank him very much. Uh, and uh, you know, I got a message from actually it was uh, early Thursday afternoon uh, to tell me that uh, you know the cap was going to come off. Uh, no more cap because they don't expect it to go into the one billion dollar. They don't want it to not get a payout if there's one guy left and they're right at six hundred and seventy five and eight hundred and eighty thousand dollar payout. They're not going to keep it from the guy because they went over the caps. Right, and that really pretty much was the main objection because a lot of people were brushed by this that they kind of got off easy. You hear six hundred and seventy five million, you go, wow, that's a lot of money, but that's nothing. Eight ten billion dollars a year and and all of you know, taking the cap off kind of takes away the criticism that that taking care of the guys who built the game. And also, and, and this was true, I mean, clearly when the initial ruling was, hey, I'm not going to approve this, make some sure that that wasn't going to be an issue in the future from both sides. Basically, the settlement allows people to cut out you could possibly be a long litigation and people are getting worse. Their physical conditions are continuing to get worse when and moving and, and start to get guys the help they need, which sometimes in the appeals and the lawsuits, oh, there's a lot of people waiting for this thing, collecting money and not just to put in their pockets, but to pay med. So I'm kind of glad that with so much money, they didn't let nickels and dimes hold them down. They got this thing done and hide and they can begin the process of helping some of these guys. And one of the handle, Jerry, because uh, we those for those who don't know his story, I know you and I do. Okay, he's in his early fifties, and year old with a walker, because and a double knee replacement. So uh, hopefully soon enough, and he'll be able to get replaced. Many years they've done, they're finding out that he's in this, and uh, then, then they would be without you know all fiberglass. I think is a tremendous advancement in, uh, and uh, hopefully he'll get his hip and both his knees replaced soon enough. I'll tell you, I was sick to me, but I wonder, man, you and I should talk about it off the air. How long each with all of those players and how long does it take to reach six hundred and seventy five million? You know what I mean? Like, I'm curious, is it sure. is it six months? Is it a year? Is it five years? I mean, how long before you reach I'm gonna watch that in the future and see because that'll be what we're talking about now, that's where that becomes important because say you reach that cap in a quicker time than people thought and then you go, wow, imagine if they didn't let that cap go. That really would have been a bad deal because look at how many people would have been left out in the cold. And again, I'm sure it takes quite a while, even with that many players, to go through $675 million. So, But I'll be interested to see a few years from now the back end of that and and where that pans out as far as did they ever reach the cap and at what year did they reach it and and it'll kind of put this more into light you know you and i this is where i got to meet jim brown was through you and talking about this lawsuit being on the show with jim he's in the news today too his 64 of course 64 last one here in cleveland the championship ring it was up for auction apparently jim brown says that he found out that this ring was up for auction and it was stolen from him back in the 60s 
And uh, but the the, wow. the the auction company says that that is not true. So they have a a path of uh, ownership, you know, a chain of command or whatever. And apparently, according to the paperwork, now this could be remember. And in looking at the date, they say back in '98 during the '90s. Remember, there was the uh, a lot of the problems with the. Um, um, the merchandise and the memorabilia, the, all of the scams as far as yes. different authentications. Well, I'm thinking maybe that's what happened because according to the website that's auctioning it, they have Jim Brown vouching in a signature the certificate of authenticity from 16 years ago. Jim Brown says, I never did that. I lost it back in the 60s or whatever. And uh, But yeah, I mean, he supposedly just saw this and said, hey, that's my ring. I've been missing it for 60 some years now or whatever. But uh, interesting that they claim that he gave it up and he says absolutely not. So who knows what's going to happen. But uh, I just wanted to bring that up with you because I know uh, uh, kind of the mutual acquaintance there. But uh, Imagine going that long and then finding it. And but when I saw the time period of '98, when they when they said they had this uh, certificate of authenticity, it had me wonder if perhaps that wasn't the time when there was a lot of forged signatures, and perhaps he wasn't uh, he wasn't wrong. Maybe he had no idea that that thing was signed. You know? Yeah, it's very possible that uh, you know that just got slipped in front of him, and uh, you know he had no idea what was going on, and that he signed it, not knowing what it was. It, it's very easy. Very capable of happening. You know, uh, Harry Clausen told me a story uh, similar to that a couple of years back that, uh, you know, there was a whole big thing uh, after the Giants won the first Super Bowl. You know, there were there were all kinds of people at night and the next morning at the press conference asking him to sign things. And uh, down the road he finds out that a program from the game that he remembers signing uh, that uh, uh, wound up going for auction and that they had a, you know, they they claim they had a path of ownership, and uh, you know Harry's son said it was stolen. You know, it was you know, from his girlfriend. It was his son's girlfriend, and, and that it was actually stolen out of her apartment. And uh, before they could do anything about it, it was sold for quite a bit of money. I mean, what happens? Like here, does Jim Brown have to rebuy his ring from auction? Because the auction people say, "Hey, we've got a chain of c- custody here, and we've got your signature here. This is." This is being auctioned. I mean, Jim Brown can't just go, hey, that's my ring. I mean, there's no police reports. There's, a, I highly doubt. I think there's nothing in what I've read that he filed a police report about it being stolen at that time. His only option here would be to buy it back. Am I right? Well, he can. Uh, I don't know when the auction can um, get a legal process going where he can uh, subpoena the auction house not to sell that ring until an investigation is completed. But now the problem with on him, okay, and the costs for that are on him, not the auction company. You know, all he can do is get a lawyer to get a court to subpoena them to not sell it. After that, there has to be some kind of investigation correct that somebody stole that ring and they, you know, I'm sure the auction house know that they got it illegally. Whoever got it and sold it to the auction house got it illegally and the person came into possession of the ring. <laughs> my, my man Vishan in the forum because he's in with this front office. So Brown again, and everybody's getting along again. So my man, well, doesn't he? Doesn't he have his Solana now? I yeah, mean, yeah. Just, no, we joke because he, not the Browns in three five right now. Again with the Cleveland. I don't. I don't. Physic or not physically. Uh, on the current NFL side, I'm not one of these guys going just because he was the greatest of all time in the '60s. You should take his football advice in 2014. I'm I'm not that guy. Some people are. I do think you should take Bernie Kosar's advice. I don't know what advice you can take from Jim Brown, but I do. I w- I'm with the people that say you have to keep him a part of your franchise all along. And a proud guy like that, he's not gonna want to feel like a a mascot. And and so that's why they create a quote unquote position in the front office for him. It's it's so that he feels he's it's so that he doesn't feel like he's the, the dancing bear out there saying, hey, come buy some tickets to the game, you know? So I I do get that side of it too. It's kind of